really pleased to introduce two great guests. We've got fellow Naval Academy alum, Jim Palumbo, with us, class of 90, down in uh, uh, San An you're in San Antonio, Jim, I believe? San Diego. San Diego, yeah, you're San Diego. Matt's in San Antonio. Yep. And uh, thank you for joining us. If you could just give us, Jim, a, a quick background on your uh, military background and then uh, and how you quickly got into franchising. Sure thing. So as you mentioned, uh, Naval Academy class of 90, um, uh, after commissioning, uh, became a Supply Corps officer, uh, did seven years active duty uh, USS Normandy, and then came out to California, worked in special operations out here, um, got out uh, in 96, and actually entered the corporate world, went to work for Pepsi, uh, worked for Pepsi for four years in uh, op both operations and in sales and sales management, and then um, went from there, wanted to stay in, in uh, Southern Cal, Went to work for a recruiting firm um, for 18 years. So I did recruiting for 18 years after that. Uh, remained as a reservist. So I was a very active reservist. So continued to serve while I was uh, working in my civilian career. Uh, so finished out 28 years um, with, um, with Navy Supply Corps. I uh, did a, a couple mobilizations uh, to uh, Kuwait and Iraq uh, and Korea. And um, after uh, completing uh, my time with my recruiting firm uh, and uh, retiring from, uh, from uh, the reserves, uh, ended up uh, taking on a defense contract uh, for two years with Defense Logistics Agency here in San Diego. Uh, that contract uh, finished up and at that point, uh, I was really looking to do something on my own. Um, I had, had tested the corporate world for quite a bit I uh, had a little bit of a feel for um, being independent as a recruiter, um, uh, worked for somebody for a long time, <laughs> both in, uh, in the military and, uh, you know, in the contracting world and in Pepsi. Um, so there's some, some downsides to climbing the corporate ladder and uh, really, uh, you know, throughout that time felt there were points where uh, I wanted to work for myself and be my own boss. And uh, the time was right, um, you know, in in uh, in my life to be able to take that leap of faith and and finally step into that world. I had some familiarity with franchising as I did a lot of research throughout my career and had a few friends uh, that had franchised in in other um, other businesses. So uh, that's when I did my research and uh, landed with Fully Promoted. Yeah, very nice. And you just started with Fully Promoted, I think. Just the end of the end of the summer, this past summer, Correct. right? Yes, August. Yes. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, thank you for that intro. We'll get to your uh, continue that journey path here in a second. I want to introduce Matt uh, Brune from uh, from down. In, he's in San San Antonio. Opened up a Mister Electric franchise, and uh, Matt reminded us before we started here that uh, uh, the Air Force Academy happened to beat the Naval Academy this year in football. So we'll see, okay. but. Jim and I both know the only game that really matters is the one that's coming up here shortly in December here. So that's right. There's anyway, a fight Matt, the second place. Yeah, fight. Yeah, great. Okay. Thank you for that. It'd be a great game. Uh, thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Uh, glad to be here. Um, my background, I graduated from the, the Air Force Academy uh, uh, 96. I spent 11 years active duty Air Force. I, I was a pilot. I flew the uh, F-15. That's what, uh, because I was... I don't know, known for, but that's why I did while I was on active duty. Got out in 2007. Uh, we did a couple interesting things. So uh, my wife, I, I know you mentioned earlier, the support of a spouse is super important. Uh, my wife, super smart. I'm sure we're all in, in similar spots uh, there. Um, I got out. I went to work for PNC Bank. and But at the same time, my wife and I bought a business uh, as well that, that she ran. I tried to be a silent investor. Um, so I did the corporate thing for the next, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 years, something like that, uh, with PNC uh, Bank. And then with I took a role at USAA. And similar to Jim, um, he, he didn't say it. He said nicer than this. Uh, I got tired of the corporate um, experience as well. I was uh, uh, done uh, sticking pencils in my eyes at board meetings. And I wanted to have more control. So uh, when we came down to Texas in 2015, uh, my wife, uh, you know, we sold our business up in, in the Pennsylvania area. 
uh, she came down and she uh, worked as a business broker. And so one of the things she was doing was helping us to locate uh, something we wanted to do. And so she uh, came upon an opportunity with Mr. Electric, which is part of the a bigger neighborly uh, uh, franchisor and just a unique situation. So we bought an existing business, but I think the, probably the reason I got into it, um, you know, so, some similarities different, definitely with Jim and other franchiser, franchisees, sorry. And so we've been at it since 2019, have had some uh, really good success. We have uh, San Antonio and Austin, and uh, we're liking it, but there's there are pros and cons and ups and downs. So I look forward to yeah. uh, you know, speaking. No. Really good intro. And, you know, a, a lot of people get into franchising in, in some sort of when they're presented with some sort of a career transition opportunity, whether it's, you know, leaving the service or like the two of you, um, you know, left the service, did the corporate thing for a while and then and then figured out that you wanted to do something differently. So your stories are, you know, very similar to most people that do get into franchising. Um, I, I want to start something you said, Matt, that struck me. So you came from banking and now you're running you know, an electric uh, home, a home services, prides, electric home services, right? So what's that all about? I mean, you, did you know anything about that line of work before you got into it? Yeah, uh, so the short answer is no. And just expounding on that, uh, Chris, you know, people looked at, look at you like you're crazy. What do you mean you're going to go buy an electric company? We actually looked at a lot of different companies, a lot of different opportunities. And this was the only one in the trades, for example. Um, but, you know, you go out there and read one, one thing, I think advice I, I often give, and I, I got it was, you know, sometimes not being an expert in what you're uh, going to do is really an aid because if, you know, if I'm an electrician and, and I've been doing it long enough now that I'm, I can pass for an electrician at times, uh, of course, but when you're starting out, you know, you're, if, if you're, if you know everything about the business you're going into, you know, it's certainly possible. It's more likely you're going to find yourself in the truck or doing that thing that's not running your business. And so people talk about, you know, that's one of the pros of, of doing it. And certainly I would, um, there probably are some businesses that I might have some reluctance in, but I think with the skills that people develop in the military and if they're open to it, you can learn something and you shouldn't let that be an obstacle. Yeah. Yeah. You, you tend to work in the business, not on it. If you're if you yes. if you're skilled as a technician, right? Originally, yeah. yeah. And I would I would also say I think you also may have some bad habits that you need to break. Oh, absolutely. Maybe the thing I like to do is hey, the thing I like doing most is wiring up panels. Well, that doesn't help my business that much. And so if that's my happy spot, it's a detriment uh, to the business. So yeah, yeah. Really I should be doing that. Yeah, Jim, is your experience similar in in, in that? I'm assuming you didn't have a whole lot of experience, you know, making signs and that sort of thing going into it, right? Right. Yes. I had never run an embroidery machine. I had never run a heat press. You know, I knew how to iron my own clothes. Um, but in, <laughs> you know, in the end, it it really was, you know, like Matt said, and like you had mentioned, um, not being an expert allowed you to become an become more of an expert at um, at working on the business and not working in the business. Um, it did help that, you know, from a macro perspective that this particular business, while it deals in apparel and promotional items is really a distribution business and having a background in logistics uh, helps. Um, but for the most part, um, it, it really, you know, as a, a military vet, um, having the ability to organize and lead and structure things really uh, and, and, and manage people really sets you up for success. I mean, I don't run my embroidery machine. I, I have someone that I've, that actually we, we had also purchased uh, an existing, uh, he stayed aboard and, and he's, he's fantastic. And just helping manage the workflow um, makes him more efficient and effective, but I'm not standing behind the machine running it. Um, that would, that would be bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but managing relationships, building, uh, partnerships, um, were, uh, quite, uh, we're pretty much horizontally integrated. So we have a lot of uh, partner businesses that support, uh, what we do. And that's, uh, that's what I, I kind of like about it from a supply chain background. Yeah. Jim, where, so let me ask you this, where does your business come from? Like, where do you, 
how do you how do you obtain customers and you know does tell me tell me about that so um, we're primarily a, a business to business uh, operation so a lot of it is through networking so um, joining local organizations is pretty key to developing um, those business relationships. So the local chamber of commerce, we're m members of two out here. Um, uh, BNI is another uh, organization uh, which we're members of uh, that allow us to interact with other business owners. And it is those direct relationships and those referral relationships that allow us to uh, meet the key people within uh, other businesses that are the decision makers that become our uh, our customers. Yeah, Matt, what about you? What, how do you guys, how do you guys get business? Yeah, so we are a, uh, we do about 90% residential and then 10% commercial. And so our, you know, ours is switched. We don't, when we bought the business, actually they had a BNI relationship and did it, but that's not a big source for us. It's more of, you know, Google or, you know, it's your search engine. It's, you know, phone, phone books are mostly dead, but there's a little bit of that. For us buying an existing business, it's existing customer base, but it's it's Google, your search engines, uh, radio, TV. If you if you go there, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And do you run all that advertising yourself, or or does the franchisor help you help you with that? Uh, it, it's it's a mix. So we're um, typically when a franchisor or franchisee starts, you know, and they're starting from the ground. Yes, the franchisor goes and helps. But even for us, they provide vendors. You know, as you grow and you get um, better and more evolved, and, and we kind of, we started at maybe a more evolved level, you end up doing, finding your own vendors, doing your own things, uh, finding better ways that fit for you. But I think most vendors, and certainly ours, has, you know, a, right out of the gate, they've got vendors for you. It's maybe said this way, as time goes on, you get better at managing the vendors, which is really key to your success. But, mm. So it's yeah. a little bit of both. Yeah, no, good stuff. Um, you know, one of the things that veterans are, I, we get asked all the time is, how do you, how long does it take after you open your business until it starts generating enough income to sort of replace maybe the income stream that you had before when you had a job, right? So Matt, can you elaborate? I mean, with yours, you bought an existing business. So I assume that was that was already cash flow positive when you bought it. Yeah. Um, Jim, maybe the question's better suited for you um, because you started your fully promoted franchise and you're only, what, three or four months into it. So maybe you're not even at that point yet. But any thoughts on that? Well, we, we too were, were uh, a purchaser of an existing. Oh, you, but, oh okay. yeah. My fault. But at the same time, um, one of the things that you try to do when you do a turnover is for as much as you can is have a fairly clean break as far as... Um, a work in progress so that the outgoing owner finishes up and you're, you're pretty much starting at zero. So in my first, you know, half month, you know, it was a few thousand dollars, you know, but each month what I've tried to do is, is put enough in the hopper. So get enough work in progress where um, uh, every month since we've, we've grown. So I've seen, you know, my, my first full month where, um, uh, I've oper I had uh, operating income come in at twenty thousand dollars, and then the next month twenty five thousand dollars. This month we're at thirty five thousand dollars. So, um, and that and that's top line revenue, you know. But um, you know, but at the same time we're developing, you know, a work in progress that is I'm trying to double that each month, so that as that work comes in, that my my top line revenue will will increase uh, month over month. So um, we've seen a steady increase. We're definitely beyond break even. So um, you know everything's paid for. We're making money. Uh, everybody's being paid. <laughs> so that's that's good. The lights are still on, and uh, so it, it, it's it's great. So um, I think that in in startup, you know, it's a little bit more of a challenge uh, going from you know zero to a hundred. Um, but if you get in with the right uh, franchise um, and you set yourself up uh, with a good baseline financially, um, you'll you'll feel comfortable um, making that uh, that run to overcome the the initial bow wave. Yeah, 
Um, hey, Chris, one, yeah. one thing just to jump in, unless you have a follow-up, just to add in there is, and, and we've done it because we owned a, a different business before and we've been there where we're not on the payroll. And one piece of advice, here I am offering advice. I, I don't know if I, I should, but that's what, what, I see, what I see sometimes, Chris, is that someone you know is doing this as their hobby and or they're doing it on the side and they're like, ah, I can't quite support me. I will tell you one thing that's true is that if you put yourself in it and you need to make revenue or you need to get there, you are more likely to get there. I like I know people who've been running their company for 10, 15 years as a hobby, and they still haven't reached the point that they that it supports them. And they keep saying, hey, I can't wait till it can actually support me. Whereas the people who and then they go and they make the decision to switch. And guess what? All of a sudden the business is supporting them because it has to. So correct. That's one of the things that um, that I've done on my side is um, to be able to um, mirror exactly what Matt was saying is my payroll is not as the the owner. I put myself on payroll as a salesperson, so I pay myself my commission base as if I was paying any other salesperson coming in. So when I do my business development and that that turns into cash flow, that's when Jim gets paid. So um, it, it allows me to really kind of know where I'm at because you get that, you get that burn <laughs> where yeah. you know you need to be, you need to be selling um, either yourself or your sales folks need to be selling. So. Yeah. yeah, no, good insights, guys. You, you listen, you both talked about some of the reasons you got out of doing what you, um, you know, got out of the corporate jobs to, to get into franchising. Um, Talk to me about, you know, was it ever an option for you to start your own business from scratch, either an existing, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, industry or, or business? Was that ever something that you guys thought about or was franchising the first thing that you kind of thought through? Jim, do you want to go or I, I can yeah, jump in? Sure. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I had, I have, you know, my idea book that I carry around and carry throughout my career of writing every every great new idea and new business that uh, that I could think of uh, coming up and, you know, saw other people start them and, um, you know, some succeeded, some failed. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so it, it was all the, the investment of capital and time um, and development to do something on your own way exceeded what uh what it would take to to jump into the franchise end of it plus there's there's generally no support you know you're trying to you're trying to figure that piece out yourself whereas with a right. franchise you know for a moderate investment the support structure is in place so every time i had a great idea i always look to see is there a franchise out there doing it yeah that yeah we our, so our first business was a mom and pop and we grew it to you know 40 people and sold it successfully it was great but it's lonely and there wasn't any support and you had to figure out how to deal with vendors and you had to sort it out um and you know when we were running it my wife was running it, she was in it full time and i was i had a big person's job right i, I mean i this was our joke i was off making sure that the mortgage was paid etc and a little bit of that was because the point at which we were in our life, you know, we had, um, I wasn't able to take that chance. I always assumed I would do something entrepreneurial and I grew up in a family business. Um, so it was, it was like that when we got into Mr. Electric too, it was we were looking, you know, in our list of things that we needed, you know, one of them was, hey, it needs to be able to provide this type of income. And so starting from scratch was not an option for us, but it was based on our, where we were as a family, and at, at that time, so you know, you know, say I'd retired or gone on, or the kids were out of, you know, off and done with school, I would have a different approach to that than I did when we chose to make the move. Yeah, you know, you mentioned the support network and who you asked, right? Uh, I always say you start your own business from scratch. You've got, you know, you, your competition knows your business, but you can't go to them and ask them for questions and right. advice, right? But you yeah. guys are both part of not only an existing, you know, an existing franchise brand, but Matt, in, in, in your case, it's Neighborly, which has, I don't know, 25 or 30, um, primarily based in home services. And Jim fully promoted as part of United Franchise Group, which also is a big family. So 
Um, talk about that support network, right? I mean, if you've got a question or you're experiencing a difficulty or a challenge, boy, you've got a Rolodex of a lot of people that you can call on, right? Yeah, with, without a doubt. I mean, I always say the absolute best, the best part of, of what we do, the best part of Mr. Electric is how I say it, is the other owners. You know, I can, I mean, I could pause here for 30 seconds. I could text uh, somebody who's bigger than me and we're pretty darn big at this point. And I get a response back, right? Probably in the next 10 minutes or, hey, I have a problem or I need a vendor or how do you handle this? It is fantastic. When we had a mom and pop before, yeah, I, where am I going to go, go down the street and talk to a competitor? There was no way to do that. So it is awesome. And, and conversely, like when I started, when we started, when we were just getting started, you know, we were kind of reluctant to ask questions of other owners thinking, oh, we're wasting their time, et cetera. And now I understand that that's both parties benefit from it. And, you know, next week we have a brand new, he's like been open for a week, a week and a half. He's coming to visit because I was on a conversation with him and it's like, look, you just need to go book tickets, come see us next week. We'll show you. You'll learn more by going and seeing another business similar to yeah. yours than you than you would on your own in probably two or three years. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just phenomenal. So it's, you know, I would say I cannot say enough about the owner networks and being able to share that information. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the owner the owner network on our side is is excellent as well. Um, you know, we have our social media groups and literally. You know, I mean, yesterday I, I must have posted two questions, you know, for sourcing and immediately, you know, people were answering up and same thing. I mean, even, you know, two weeks in someone, someone was asking questions and I was responding and, you know, with just as, you know, little experience as I had, but I just had a little piece of knowledge and, and that, um, that kind of, you know, group uh, mentality to be able to share that knowledge is very helpful. And then everybody that's in the group benefits from it. And then on the corporate side uh, from uh, the franchise group, um, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, we have, I have two uh, marketing uh, folks that, that help me out. We have bi-weekly calls. Uh, I have two business advisors, which, you know, literally reached out to you, you know, yesterday afternoon because I had a question on our POS system that um, is a legacy POS system. And they, they kind of, you know, I mean, with within a second, emailed me back and said, I'm on a call, but I'll call you at three o'clock. And, you know, called me at three o'clock, walked it through. Um, but just, uh, and then I had a, I had a supplier quality issue that, uh, that I'd been working through, emailed last night, this morning, literally on the drive in, the supplier was calling me. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's that quick and it's that powerful of a group and support uh, to do that through franchising. And I couldn't imagine not having that to have that supplier reach out immediately from an email that I sent last night, uh, first thing this morning on my drive and having them call me because they're a big company. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. It, you know, getting involved in the minutia, I call it, you know, it's just the minutia of the business, right? Setting up payroll or point of point of sale systems, the IT right. systems, the, all that minutia stuff that's really critical for the support of the business, but it's not, it, you know, as a business owner, you want to be focusing on your customers and your employees, not that kind of stuff. And the franchise systems provide all that. Um, last question I want to pose to each of you guys before we wrap here is, um, uh, and, and Jim, I'll start with you. What's what's the size of your business now? However you want to characterize that. You mentioned the revenues already, but in terms of the number of employees and where do you want to take it? And do you want to grow the number of territories that you've got? Yeah, so right now uh, there's um, there's four of us. So um, my wife is is working in the business. She still has her her job as well. Uh, she works in the church, but uh, she's here every day. And then um, my daughter does it, but she does some part time work from school. She's off at Loyola. And then uh, we have our uh, production uh, manager and and uh, designer. So there's four of us right now. Um, currently, uh, we're on track, um, including, you know, uh, the outgoing owner, uh, to do roughly about 900,000 this year in, uh, top line revenue, uh, goal, you know, I would like to, if I, if I can, if I really push hard in December to cross a, a million dollar mark, um, I, I think that would, uh, 
be fantastic for our group. Um, my goal next year is to be at 1.5. Um, I'm, I'm interviewing um, a gentleman this week to be an outside sales rep. So uh, trying to uh, basically uh, grow by 50% just by adding, adding one person. And then uh, by end of next year, I uh, have a second location. Nice. Yeah, it's awesome. Matt, what about you? Sounds good. Uh, so we started in February of 2019. We had, including my wife and I, uh, we had 12 employees. Uh, we were, I think the year before, they'd done 2.8 million in revenue, top line revenue. Uh, last year, well, sorry, I just say this year, uh, we'll hit 7 million later this month. Um, we are, we've really built out our leadership team. So we have almost as many leaders as we had employees before, managers and supervisors, which by the way, if you think that means good things, just know that it's, it's far harder to develop managers and leaders than it is to develop you know, frontline technicians or employees. It just takes, it's a longer term investment, but that's where we're at. We have, we have already, we have a really big uh, territory because um, we, we go from South of San Antonio to North of Austin. So right now we're focused on building that out and, uh, and uh, not saying further expansion is not possible. Uh, next year uh, we're shooting for $10 million in, in top line revenue. And so we'll continue to grow, but uh, you know, might be organic versus uh, inorganic. Yeah, no, that's great. And I, I understand with home service is one of the other strategies is sometimes layering on additional brands because you've already got the existing customer base, right? Instead yeah, but of growing, growing horizontally. I got to be careful. I got to be careful saying things like that, right? Because then my my friends get nervous. So, but yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, you guys are both an inspiration. Congratulations to you both, and uh, uh, inspiration to our uh, viewership here, thinking about you know doing the same thing. So. Um, love it. Thank you. Thank you both for joining us. And uh, we hope to talk with you again soon. If you join us again at some future point. Thank thanks you. for Look forward, look forward cool. to doing it. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. Take care.